Hey there! Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Today, I want to share with you some really easy projects that are hot sellers in my store right now. So, let's jump on in. The first one is going to be an adorable scarecrow head that we make out of a wine bottle. I have a friend that gives me all of her wine bottles. And then I like to use this Dixie Belle Slick Stick. It's like a primer for glass because you know it's kind of hard to get the paint to stay on the glass sometimes. So you just put the Dixie Belle Slick Stick one coat all over your wine bottle. Then I'm going to use this Dixie Belle color called Burlap. It's just like a flesh tone. You can use any flesh colored paint, it doesn't matter. But you know, like the color that a scarecrow is. So this one's called burlap. And I just gave it one simple coat of this. It's all it needs with that slick stick is just one coat. Now this project goes so fast. Make sure that you lay your wine bottle on something where it's not gonna move around. Just take you a Sharpie or any permanent black marker and you're going to start with the eyes now i just do triangles but i try to round the ends so that they look you know more like scarecrow eyes then i did a orange nose and then i just kind of did like a little jiggity jaggedy mouth i can't describe that any other way and then you know how the scarecrows have like the little stitches so I just went around and I made my stitches. And then I leave a little area on the sides for the eyes to where I'm gonna do that part white. So it just kind of makes the eyeball look a little bit better. And then I just colored the rest of it in with my black Sharpie. Just make sure you don't go in those lines because we're gonna do those white. Or you could leave them the flesh color if you wanted. Then I draw the little eyelashes on, and I go and make all my little stitches, and then make the eyebrows a little bit prettier. And then I just used a white permanent marker that I got from Walmart, and then I just colored those little areas in, and that's his face. Now, I don't remember where I got this piece of burlap at, but what we're going to do is cut off a like a small stripe here off of the end, and I realized that this one was way too thick, so I made it smaller. And you really only need it to be about an inch to an inch and a half thick. Just make sure it don't cover up your mouth. Now this is gonna look almost like a little scarf is all we're doing here. And I just put a little glue around it to hold it on there and make it overlap itself so it looks like a little scarf. And then I took one of my signature buttons and I'm just gonna stick it right there. You could put a sunflower or anything. It doesn't matter where those little two areas come together. I also took one of those small pine cones, the one that comes in the packs from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna place that in front of my button just to give it a little something extra. I thought that was cute. And then I just made sure that I put a couple little bits of glue in the back so his little scarf don't ride up on us. Now we're going to make his hair. And I just took some of this raffia. I got mine off of Amazon because I cannot find any in the Dollar Tree. And if you feel more secure, you can put some jute around the middle of it just to kind of hold it all together. You can either glue it at the very top of your bottle the part where, you know, the, the actual liquid comes out at, or you can put it like in the front part of the bottle like I did here. Either one's going to work, and it's going to be covered up so it does not have to be beautiful. Just make sure that you put enough hot glue where those little strings of that hair is not going to fly away everywhere. And then I just took and trimmed the excess off, but make sure that it's going to be able to stick out underneath your hat. Now we're going to make the hat, and I have about a foot and a half of, bur of burlap. So we're just going to do a test run and make sure it's going to look right. You literally just lay it down and kind of squeeze it at the top of the bottle, 
And naturally, the very front part, which would be the little brim of the hat, is going to be shorter because the burlap is in a rectangle shape. And so it just lays right, and you just kind of maneuver it to make sure that you've got it exactly the way you want it. Here's a little bit closer view of how, see, I just kind of squished mine together at the top. I just grabbed it from the top, and it automatically kind of made the correct shape. I got some of this jute cord off of Amazon, and it's in my Amazon store if you want some, but it's the same kind from the Dollar Tree, the same width. And I always like to glue mine in the very back. I wrapped it around the top of that bottle about four or five times and then just glued it in the back so it won't go anywhere. Just make sure that you tie it tight enough where it's not going to come unraveled and it's going to make the hat keep its shape. And then you just fluff everything out, make sure that the hat looks right and that the hair looks right. Then I simply took a sunflower that came off of a stem from the Dollar Tree and stuck it right in the center of his hat. And then I just took an extra leaf that I had off of one of my stems and put that right behind the sunflower. And this fella is ready to party in the pumpkin patch tonight. Let me know how you like this guy. Now this next one, we're gonna make a beautiful fall swag. I got these from Hobby Lobby. They're normally 12 bucks, but of course they were half off. So I got them for $6 a piece. I ended up getting three of them, but only using two. So we're gonna make this swag way cheaper than you could buy it in the store. Now this was a process that I learned as I went. I first took one of those Dollar Tree signs that has the pumpkin cut out of it, one of the longer signs, and glued two of those floral foams to it, and then I ended up ripping those off because I did not need them. And so right now, we've just got that long pumpkin sign and then two of these, and you put them butt to butt, if that makes sense there, and we're going to use zip ties to tie them down to the board. Now, when I started, I used my bigger zip ties. Actually, I put three together to make one big one. And I just tied both of those stems right in the middle of my board. Now, I've got two beautiful, beautiful pumpkin picks. Look how pretty these are. They came from Hobby Lobby. They're normally $4.99, so I got them for $2.50 a piece. So, so far, we have about... 17 bucks going into this piece and this is about all we put into this piece but i looked at the prices of these at hobby lobby and they were about 40 dollars half off so we're still saving half i took this pumpkin also that i got from the dollar tree actually it was in their three dollar section and it's a pretty burlap i had to cut two small holes in the bottom of it just small ones, just little slits, and I ran a zip tie through it, and so I could tie it to that board. And those other two pumpkin stems that I just showed you, I just slid those underneath that first zip tie so everything would be good and sturdy. Now, like I said, this was a learning curve. Some things I had to change as I went, and I did, and I'm just kind of fluffing everything up here and making sure everything looks the way I want it to. I ended up pushing the two longer branches, the first ones that I put in, kind of pushing them in a little bit more. And if there was any part of that big end of that stem, like kind of exposed too much, I would just take my cutters and cut it off. Now here's where the game changed and I got a little bit smarter. I have this tool called a crocodile, and it's got like on the end, it's got a great big uh, barreled hole maker or a larger one, you know. And so I made four holes in the sides of this. 
That way it would be easier to slide those zip ties around and they wouldn't be to where you could see them as much. I could tie things down and get it more sturdy. So I just tied those clips around, the first clips that I put in, because they needed a little bit more support. Now, if you just have a regular hole punch, it would work too, because these Dollar Tree boards are so thin, you can pop right through them with no problem. And I realized my board was too long. I just needed a little bit for some stability. So guys, I flipped this board over and literally just broke the ends off of it to where I only had about a foot and that's really all the board you need you don't have to use the dollar tree ones you can use any kind and you saw i just cut off any excess of those first big long twigs that i had on there and now that i popped those holes in there i'm just going through and i'm going to tie these down to where they are more secure so all i'm doing is sticking these first two stems back in there now all I've added is those first two long branches, the leaves, and then these two little side uh, pieces that have the pumpkins, and then the pumpkin in the middle. That's all that we've used on this sign, absolutely. I'm just getting smarter as I go as to how to tie it down. It was a learning process. I don't make a lot of swags, but it wasn't hard. It's just I had to figure out how to do it. You know what I mean? So once I got all this in place, I just used those holes that I made and tie wrap them down to that main board. But instead of just putting one hole on each side, I ended up putting two holes on each side. That way I could run the tie wrap in and right back out. I'm sorry that my head kind of gets in the way. I'm trying that, um, Thing that goes over my head so that you can have a better view. It looks like you're me looking at my project. See, there's my two holes. They're kind of side by side, and I simply just run that up into one and get it around the little clip itself that I'm trying to hold down, and then run it down into the hole beside it, and it made it so much easier to do it that way. And then, of course, on the back, I just clipped off any excess that I had. Now, I didn't want to put too much money in this swag, so I took this one stem that I got for $2.50 at Hobby Lobby. It's normally $5, and it's three of these little, I guess they're like little faux pompous grass. And I'm just going to take them. I had a minute cutting those apart, and I'm just going to slide those in various spots inside my swag. And I had so many tie wraps down at this point that it was very easy just to slide the end of these stems underneath anywhere where I put it in at. And it just went underneath where the little, um, you know, tie wraps are tied. I'm excited to let y'all know that next week I'm going to start some Halloween videos. And it's not going to be like ticky tacky or kitty looking Halloween. It's going to be some nice high end Halloween that you could use even for fall. It doesn't have to be just Halloween. Now I take this long raffia that I have and I wanted to place this up at the top, like right behind where my pumpkin is and I just tie wrapped it right down to the back in one of those holes and I had some pieces that were so long I'm just going to trim those off once I get it tied in there and I hope that you guys will let me know if you are interested in these Halloween videos I just want a little bit of a change up you know I don't usually do a lot of Halloween but I'm going to do them in a nice skillful way like I said it's not going to look anything cheap or kitty just let me know what you think I mean you know, I've been doing fall for a little bit, and there's only so much of a season you can do before you kind of start getting bored. And I'm not saying that I'm bored, but I just want a little bit of some kind of a change up, you know? I'm going to take some of this beautiful Spanish moss that I have, and I just take a big wad of it, basically. I'm going to put it underneath my pumpkin in two of the little holes that I've created there. I just tied it, and then I fluffed it out. And then I went and made sure that I cut all of my stems off the back of those zip ties, you know, where they're just hanging out, cut off anything that needed to be trimmed down and fluffed everything out really well. 
and this thing was really rough on me to be such an easy project. Like I said, it just took me a minute to get the hang of it. I hope you like it. If you like my content so far and you find it valuable, I'd like to ask you to hit that like button and hey, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. I would love to have you as part of my family. This next one is so easy, but it sells like hotcakes. I have Summer Crush by DIY, which is a beautiful orange pumpkin-y color and just a piece of barn wood. And these are so easy to make, guys, and they sell really good. So if you want to sell at festivals and stuff, this is an excellent idea. Now, I'm just going to color my barn wood, and I gave it one coat. And I did almost like a dry brushing on the edges because I didn't want it to have a full all-over coat. I wanted you to still see bits and pieces of that barn wood peeking through. I first saw this on my friend Sonnet's channel, and I tried it out, and it's doing really good in my stores, and so I've been making them. I just want to say thank you all for supporting me and my channel. For every like and comment that you give me, it really helps boost me in the algorithm, and that puts my channel out there so other people can see me that haven't seen me before. And always subscribe, please. That helps me more than anything. Now here I'm just going to spell the word fall on the front of my sign and I'm using my IOD typesetter stamps. Now I usually like to use this little thin mount because it makes it easier and it shows me exactly where to put my letters to make them right. But it kept falling off and I wasn't sure how to do it yet. Later on I found out how to. You just have to put low tack adhesive on your little thin mount or on the back of your stamps actually. But, and my head was blocking the way, I'm so sorry, but all I did is just lay the F-A-L down on my board and I used my fingers to push down all over the letters and get it to show up on the block. I'm sorry it didn't show up very good on that part, or it showed up good, but my head was in the way. I'm just trying out this new angle, and the angle's good, but I had my camera all funny right here. Now, we're just going to use the little pumpkin. You have a big and a little pumpkin in this next set of stamps, and it is the Harvest. It's called Harvest something. Uh, Harvest Greetings, maybe? And it is IOD stamps. Now, you can get any IOD products, all kinds of products, decoupage paper, paint, anything you want from my friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter. That's where I get all of my supplies at. I tell in every video because I always have somebody ask me. And you guys need to try out Lori over at Milton's Daughter. And she will give you 10% off if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10. Now here you can see so much better, and I'm sorry that I messed that first part up with my big noggin, but here you see you just lay the stamp down. They're so easy, and I know IOD products cost a little bit more, but guys, these stamps are forever. You can use them so much, and I can sell one or two of these signs, and it's paid for my whole little set of stamps. You know what I'm saying? So it's not really if you do sell it, you always get your investment back, but if not, you can still use it forever, but you just press down until you know your pumpkin is going to be correct, and look how beautiful and perfect it turns out every time. Now, I wanted to color in the stem a brown color, so I just used the Waverly color called Truffle and just literally dabbed it on with my paintbrush. And I waited for it to dry and just went over that very top part where the stem was again so that that detail would pop back out again. Then I just took my stamp pad and I ran it along the edges. It just gives it a little extra detail and creates a black effect on the sides of my little sign. Then I took some raffia and just used my jute twine and tied it up in the middle. 
and then I'm just going to glue this right down catty corner up over the F in the word fall. But before I glued it down, I just trimmed it up a little bit to make it look nice and neat. Then I just took one of those sunflowers that comes in the pack from the Dollar Tree and clipped the little end off of it and stuck it right in the center of my raffia. Or you could do a button. I hope you like this. Now this last one is one of those things that you put your bags in. You know when you get a bunch of Dollar Tree or Walmart bags and you just stuff them up under the sink? Well, that's what I do with them anyway. This is a sweet little container that you can put them in that I found at the thrift store. And I loved it the way it was, but I'm not really a wine connoisseur. I don't even drink it. And it just didn't go with anything that I was going to do. So we're going to try something new. I used DIY's Vintage Linen, which is one of my favorite colors of off-white, and I did two coats on the very top part of this box and on the front part. I left the sides and the back the wood color that it was because it was so beautiful. We're going to try an IOD paint inlay. I've never done these before. I'm very excited about trying them. I had a couple to pick from, and I chose the indigo floral. I love blue and white together. There's something so pretty about it and very classic. Now, it could go for a fall theme, but I figured if it's going to be for your bags, we need to have it where it's going to be all year round and... It still goes with every season if you want it to. So what you do is you just lay out. These come in strip, like um, different sheets. That's the word I'm looking for. And you lay it out to the size you need. And it's got a grid on the back that makes it very easy to cut. Now I simply just press down around it with my fingers. And it gave me the shape that I need. I flipped it over and just cut that shape right out. Now the instructions say that you put a coat of paint on and while it's wet is when you put your inlay down right on the paint. So I've got a good coat of white of the vintage linen white paint. I put it on here and you lay this face down on the side that does not have the grid. You straighten it up and I like to use a brayer. You don't have to but just to make sure that it's down on there really good. And then you use a moist or like a wet rag, or you can use a baby wipe like I did, and just like blot it is basically kind of the word I'm looking for. You blot it all over to where the whole design is kind of moist from you blotting it there. And then you absolutely leave it alone and let it dry. And while that's drying, we're going to put the word bags on the top. And I'm using my typesetter stamps. These are my, my favorite stamps. They're so easy to just put words on anything, you know. And I used my little thin mount, and it was sticking perfectly this day. I don't know what happened to the other, the second time when I try to do fall. <laughs> so... I just like to put my ink on there both ways, kind of horizontal and vertical to make sure I get it on there real good. And this time I used a gray ink. It's a dark gray ink called Stone Gray. And you see with these, you hold it firmly with one hand and use the other hand to kind of press over the letters. Pull your thin mount off and it's perfect every time. Now, no matter how long this takes to dry, it can take 10 minutes or you can leave it overnight. It doesn't matter. Mine literally took about 15 minutes because I kind of helped it out with the heat. But it says that you mist it with water whenever you're ready to take it off and give it a few seconds to kind of moisten up. And all you're going to do is simply lift that off. Now, I suggest that you lift off just the corners at first to make sure that, you know, you got your 
color on there correctly and everything looks good and you see how careful i was being now this is the first time i've done these and i was so happy with the result look at this when i pulled it off is this not gorgeous i mean the color it really was easy i don't know why i was so afraid and intimidated to try this now you can use these sheets up to about four even five times the color gets a little more faded every time but it also to me actually looks better the less that's on there like every time you use it it seemed like it got prettier and prettier to me and don't do what I did here and rub your fingers across it because the paint's not dry yet. I don't know what I was thinking, honey. I just sprayed it with the sealer and here you go. And by the way, I didn't have a video out Tuesday because I was so busy redoing an armoire that my sister left me. And I'm going to show you guys the process and how I paint stuff and how easy I think it is to paint furniture in a special video on Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you are excited about some Halloween DIYs just to shake it up a little bit and do something different. I love you guys, and I'll see you all soon. Hopefully Sunday. And for all you Sabby fans out there, I thought I would throw this in. This is him in his Halloween costume this year. He is the killer clown from It. Notice the little red balloon in his hand. <laughs> and as I do the Halloween videos, I'm going to put different little clips of him in his costume. And of course, he'll make his appearance. And I may have a few surprises up my sleeve for you. Get across this road, girls, before you get run over. I'm going to start off with this old farmhouse window. And this is a farmhouse window that we got from our friend that actually came out of an old farmhouse right here in Tennessee. And the first thing that I had to do was clean it up real good. And you know I don't usually like to mess with the texture. I like to leave it the way it is. I normally put polycrylic around the white part, but I thought... I'm going to paint this one. So I used my DIY paint in the color Gypsy Green, and I went all the way around the outsides of this. This color of green has become my new favorite. I absolutely love it. My friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter sent it to me and told me to try this color. And man, I am so glad she did. It's a very popular green color right now. Hey, and by the way, if you need any paints that are DIY or if you need any type of IOD products and she has many other products, I'm going to leave the link for Lori's store down below. She gives my subscribers 10% off all of your IOD stuff, but you know DIY paint and most paint companies don't allow their paint to be discounted, but you can get 10% off of all your IOD, which every little bit helps. I also did the inside part of these window panes there where I'm painting right now. I'm really glad that I gave this a try because it is gorgeous. And I only did one coat on this because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. And DIY paint does dry lighter than when you first put it on. Then I flipped my window over and I painted each of the panes with the color called beadboard. It's an off-white color, and I really like it because it's not that stark white color. So that's all I did on the back side was paint each of my panes the white. The little bit of white that I had left on my paintbrush, I just kind of went around the outside part and painted that wood, and it was a very, very light dry brushing. I'm going to try some crackle. This is a Dixie Bell crackle, and it's the first time I've tried it. It says to put your bottom paint coat on and then you put the crackle on and when the crackle is absolutely dry, you're going to put another top coat of whatever color you prefer. And that bottom coat is the one that actually crackles. 
I decided that I wanted my top coat to be that gypsy green color because sometimes when you do your layers on these windows and you hold them up, you can see the streaks through it. And what I mean by that is like it, it's kind of like you can see through the white. And I don't like that. I like it to look solid and really pretty and have no light showing through. And I hope that makes sense. But the crackle turned out to be beautiful on this. I got a new IOD transfer book, and this one's called Painterly Florals. And so I'm going to try it out because it has sunflowers and my favorite flower, which I can't pronounce correctly. I call them peonies, but you guys have told me it's peony. <laughs> I just don't like saying it that way. But anyways, so I cut out the couple of sunflowers and just a few of the peonies that I thought looked really good and plus it's fall and man you can't get any better than a sunflower for fall. When I do these farmhouse windows I always like there to be some kind of words on here and this book didn't have any words or anything so I got some of the words out of my brocante book and then I just started laying my transfers down the way that I had placed them and you know you just take that white backing off you lay it down and it's almost like a sticker and you use the little tool that they send with each of their little transfer books and you rub it and it just comes off onto your surface and it's always beautiful and perfect I cannot rave enough about any IOD product. Every time that I use one, I know it's a no-fail and a no-brainer that it's going to sell in my booth. And by the way, guys, when I sell these farmhouse windows in my booth, I usually sell each one for $75 at the least, and they are gone within the first few days that I put them out. After you get your transfer off, you just burnish it, and that just means that you use that film that it was attached to and rub it around, and it just kind of helps it stick better and take off some of the outer edges that would make it not look as natural. And it absolutely looks like you have painted these on here. So I just went around and put the sunflowers in the spots where I thought that they would look good. I really hope that this one sells as well as my other ones do. I'm just not personally into sunflowers that much, but I thought it made a beautiful, beautiful farmhouse window. I decided not to show myself putting down every single transfer because I probably put about a total of 15 transfers on this and it's just repetitive. It's the exact same thing no matter what it is. You lay it down and use that little tool that they give you and then you pull it off and you burnish it and that's pretty much it. And this is me putting the words on. I'm just an old southern girl from Tennessee, so I have no idea what the word says, but it looks really good on the sign, and I know it's French, and that's about as far as I can go with that. And then these are the peonies that I was putting on, and they are so beautiful, guys. I can't say enough about how pretty their transfers are. Another thing that I really like about their transfers is that you can layer them. And what I mean by that is I have a peony down there in that bottom corner that I'm working on. And you can put your sunflower kind of halfway over the top of that. And it looks like one is in the background and one is in the foreground. And I absolutely love that. It makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. As we're getting to the end here, if you'll notice, I try to make my things a little cohesive by whatever I put on one side on the left, I try to put on the right because I just think it looks better and it seems to go that way. And then I just stuck a little wreath in the middle of this one because it needed it. And I got this wreath at the Dollar General on clearance for $2.50. I hope y'all like this one. Let me know what you think.
If you're enjoying my content so far, there's a couple things I'd like to ask you. If you would, hit the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. And hey, subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my family. And there's a little bell beside it. And if you hit it, YouTube will let you know every single time that I upload a video. Now let's get back to the DIYs. On this one, I'm going to mix up some vintage mustard by Home Decor and a little bit of the color by Dixie Belle called Muscadine Wine. I want a very muted orange color, and I got the color exactly that I wanted. I got this little decorative wood box at Southeastern Salvage for just $7, and it was already this peachy color, and so I went over it with two coats of that color that I just mixed up with the vintage mustard and muscadine wine. Then I used this color that's a copper color, and it's metallic. I got it from Plaid, and it is the most beautiful coppery, pumpkin-y color. And so I just kind of did like a dry brush across this so it would have like a metallic-y highlight to it. I took my IOD stamps, and I have this one that has the apples on it. This came from a fall set that's called Harvest Gathering. And I absolutely love this. All you do is just put a little bit of your ink on there and then you lay it down and you hold it still with one hand and press it with the other so that it makes a perfect one every time. I put the apples on both of the sides of this. These stamps also have different size of pumpkins and I used the smaller one and put that on there too. I like that pumpkin so well, I flipped it over and put it on the back side too. This stamp set had all kinds of fall stuff. It had little acorns, leaves. It even had those little spinny things that come out of the trees, and we call them helicopters. It just was so cute. The different size pumpkins, and I just went hog wild putting it all over this little box, and it's so adorable. I used my gypsy green color to go over the words Farmer's Market on the stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree. It has a little chicken on it, but I didn't use that. I just used the words that says Farmer's Market, and the way I do my stencils is I want very little paint on there, almost like a dry brush, and I just pounce it up and down, and that way it doesn't bleed or have any mistakes. I took my favorite gel stain, which is the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, and it's in the color called Tobacco Road. I actually like this better than I do the antiquing wax. I just like the texture of it, and it's so easy to put on. There's no smell, but I really do like it a lot. It reminds me of the antiquing wax. Um, so I went and did the handle, and I just kind of did around the edges of this. Anywhere where I thought it needed just a little bit distressing and a darker touch. I used that Voodoo gel stain on the inside of the box too. Even though you're not really going to see it, I know it's there and I want to make my projects complete. That way when somebody purchases it, if they do happen to look inside or take it apart, they're going to know that it's a good quality item that I put my time and heart into. I did that farmer's market in the gypsy green color and it just wasn't it was missing something like it needed to be highlighted so i simply took a sharpie and just kind of highlighted the words a little bit so that they would stick out some more and while i was at it i used that sharpie just to create little lines ever so often for a little bit extra distressing i'm going to put florals in this and i used two of those floral squares and the way that I know exactly how much I needed was I just lay it down beside the other, mark it with the scissors so I know where to cut, and it fit right in there like a glove. I'm going to use this vintage mustard color. I've been using it a lot, and it's a beautiful fall color. It's made by Home Decor. And I got these florals the other day from Amazon. And they are so bright orange, y'all. And... I'm not really into the bright orange. I might do some bright orange, but I wanted to tone them down. 
And I just wanted to show you the difference here in the colors of when I toned it down and what it looked like before. So I just painted up everything that was that bright orange color and I made sure to cut all my stems. I've got this different colored ones. And right now, for some reason, I'm into like a muted fall. I don't want any bright. I don't want any, you know, I, I like the orange and green, but I like a muted orange and green. And guys, I have to brag about this eucalyptus again that I got from Amazon. It's the best eucalyptus I've ever had. It cost about the same as what I buy at Walmart, but it's much better quality. And I have it linked in my Amazon store if you want some. So basically, this is just kind of like a filler or the, the base of everything. So I put my highest pieces in the middle. This is how I do my florals. And as you guys know, I always say what goes on the left goes on the right. You kind of put the same things. I have these orange, muted orange eucalyptus stems. They come from Amazon. And when I put one on the left, I'll put it on about the same spot on the right. I use those bushes called hop bushes. That's what I'm putting in the green. And it came from Dollar Tree, and it's really pretty. And then this is that bright orange bush that I tamed down. The one there on the right is where I tamed it down. I added mostly that, but I did add about two or three of the bright orange just because I like to use the same shade of a color, like say instance orange, but just different shades of that orange because I think it brings something to the table. But all I'm doing here is adding something on the left and adding the same thing on the right. And then you see I used kind of muted colors. I do have that one piece of pompous grass that's bright yellow back there in the back, and it's just one piece, and I stuck it kind of on the side. I have this little green berry bush. I don't know what it's called. It's just berries, and it came from Dollar Tree, and I stick some on the right and then on the left. And in the front, I decided to put like a little fake corn, one of those corns that come from the Dollar Tree. I also have this wheat that come from the Dollar Tree. And the secret to using those Dollar Tree florals is to make sure that you cut them off. I took a little pumpkin here. It's one of the pumpkins that I got from Hobby Lobby. And it's white, and I painted it with that vintage mustard. I did kind of like a dry brushing, and it turned out so pretty. I just simply take a Dollar Tree skewer and poke it through the bottom of my little pumpkin. I cut it off to the size that I want it. Poke it through the pumpkin and then stick that down inside that floral foam and it stands up perfectly. I have this piece of burlap that come from Walmart and all I do is wrap it over itself and just kind of lay it down. It covers up that green floral foam and it just looks nice. It looks really pretty. I took four different pieces, I'm sorry, three different pieces of ribbon. I have a, like a skinny burlap and then this plaid one and then this little skinny one from Dollar Tree that's the crocheted white color. And I glued them all together so they would make one ribbon. And then I just tied it in a figure eight and I'm going to do that the same way that I did that pumpkin and put it on a skewer and it'll kind of stand up in there. I do my figure eight, tie it with a piece of jute twine. Then I picked out two buttons, a larger yellow colored one and then a darker one. And I put the larger one in the center of the bow and then a smaller one on top of it. Cause buttons is vintagey looking to me. I like it, I think it looks cute. And after I did this, I actually bought some green, really thick green ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I made another figure eight and put it on the back of this bow because I felt like this bow needed to be thicker and fatter. So in the end, you'll see that green color too. But you see, I put it on the skewer just like I did that little pumpkin. I just glue it on there and pop it right down inside there. And that's all I did to this. And then this is that little candy corn. I put it on a skewer too and popped it down in there sideways. It just gave it a little something and a little added dimension. Let me know what you think about this. Find these seem impossible to score.
This is my last one, and it's really quick. I have these two um, candle holders or candle stands. I've had them forever, and they were already painted white and distressed. They came from Hobby Lobby and had $20 on the bottom, but I thrifted these. I'm going to paint them with two coats of the Gypsy Green and let it dry. And guys, let me know if y'all are having trouble getting my videos. I've had two people so far tell me that the last video that I put out, that for them, they couldn't get it until one or two days later. It just wasn't showing up or something. So make sure that you've got that subscribe button hit. And beside the subscribe button, there's a bell. And if you hit that bell, click on the word all, and that way they will let you know every time I put out a video. But as of right now, I'm going to try to do two videos a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, this one got out a little later. Of course, today's Wednesday. But it will be Tuesdays and Fridays at 630 and I'm going to try my best to do that and just have a smaller number of DIYs. Instead of doing a bigger video of about five, I'm going to do about three in each video. And we're just going to see how that goes. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to the one time a week and do five. And I may do that anyways. We're just kind of doing a little testing of the waters. So make sure you watch out for me on Tuesdays and Fridays. So... Like I said, I gave these two coats of the Gypsy Green and let them dry. Now we're going to decoupage on these candles. You know I love to do this if you've stuck around my channel for a while. I put a little bit of Mod Podge on my fingers to separate the layers. And I love this napkin. This napkin actually came from the Dollar Tree. And I have a bunch of fall napkins. It's not that I don't have many because I think I used this in my last video. I just really like this little pumpkin scene. I go around the image as close as I can with a wet paintbrush. I put water on it, and then I just pull it away with my fingers. Because remember, we don't use scissors when we're decoupaging. You want that edge to be kind of frayed. That's what looks more natural and really pretty. I take my candle and I lay it down where it cannot move. And what I'm going to do is just put a thin layer. That's the trick. You can even put a little water in your Mod Podge. But I put a thin layer in the center. And I always start in the middle of my napkin. Because that way I can get the middle stuck down. And then I can do the bottom half and the top half. And make sure that I don't have wrinkles that way. I just kind of let it fall on its own. I don't force anything. And it's very important to make sure that you get the edges sealed. And that's basically all I do. And my napkins always come out with no wrinkles. They're perfect. I'm not saying that I'm all that. But I just practiced a lot. Because I used to not be able to do this without getting wrinkles. But all I do is start in the middle, then I do the bottom and the upper half, make sure the edges are sealed. And as always, the holy grail of decoupage is that saran wrap. I just use the sides of the saran wrap and kind of pull it taut. And that way it pulls that napkin back onto that candle and it takes every wrinkle out. And you can also use your fingers, like I always say, I use my fingers like a mini iron because the heat from your finger and rubbing it across the top of that saran wrap just takes those wrinkles right out and they're perfect every time. So I will just show you this one candle because it's the same on both. I do the exact same process and I don't want to bore you guys. And then I took my DIY white wax and my wax brush, and Miss Lori sent me this from Milton's Daughter. And like I said, you get 10% off um, if you shop with her, so I'm going to leave her link below. Don't forget to tell her that Crafty Kathy sent you. You use the code CraftyKathy10 for your 10% off. Basically, you just put your wax all over whatever you're needing to seal, and it seals this paint in. And then you just give it a few minutes, and then you just wipe it off with the rag. And that's all you do on this. And guys, I just want to say, if y'all stuck through through this whole video, thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me today. I appreciate every one of y'all. I love you from the bottom of my heart. 
Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that like button because it really helps me out on the algorithm here on YouTube. And I thank y'all and I appreciate every bit of help that y'all give me back. And I love y'all. I think these are as cute as a button. My wristwatch is broken. My shoes are untied. Time is a ticking, and so is the tide. But I am not worried. I love y'all. Have a blessed week, and may God bless your family richly. I'll see you soon on Friday, 6 30. I'm going to start off with one of my old farmhouse windows. And you know that these actually come out of an old farmhouse here in Tennessee. And I'm going to use Skeleton Key, which is my favorite gray color by DIY Paint. And I'm also going to use the Beadboard, which is an off-white color. Because I don't want the gray in that Skeleton Key to be a darker gray. I want it to be a little bit lighter. So we're just gonna mix mostly Skeleton Key with a little bit of beadboard and get the color that I desired. Now, I always wash and clean these windows really good before I ever start the front and the back because I do use both sides. So I did a little test here to make sure that it is the color I wanted and it is. So what I do is go all the way around everywhere where you see the white and I'm going to give it two coats of this color. If you're interested in any of the paint products that I'm using today or to get 10% off of IOD, I'm going to leave Lori at Milton's Daughter her information down below and how you can get 10% off if you use her shop. I flipped this over and painted the back beadboard. Then I have a stencil that I got off of Amazon, and it is linked in my Amazon store if you want one. And I cut the pieces down because I needed it to be in smaller pieces. And it says the song, How Great Thou Art. I really love that. That's my favorite uh, gospel song. And it says, Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. I absolutely love that. And this is the first time I've ever tried to stencil on one of these windows. You know, usually I just do the transfers and leave it be, but I wanted to do this one upon a special request. I used the color cake batter for most of it. It is also a DIY paint. And then I just used a black Waverly chalk paint to do some of the words, just to kind of break up the monotony of the color. I'm so proud of how this turned out. I think it looks great. And you know when I stencil, I almost am using a dry brush. Very, very light bit of paint on my stencil brush and I just pounce it up and down. Now I am gonna use transfer and this is the Ruby Rose and it's from Prima Redesign. I simply do these like I do any transfer. I lay them out in the pattern that I want them to go in. And then they all come with the little tool that you use to rub across the top of your transfer. You just peel it off of the back, lay it on the whatever the project is you're putting it on, and you use your little tool to rub it. And in doing so, it comes off almost like a sticker. And so I went all over this picture and put it where I wanted it to go. Then I was finished doing that, I burnished it. And that just means where you rub that film that you just took that piece off of, you rub it over your piece, and it just basically helps it to stick down a little better. I had some birds that I had made from resin from a previous DIY, and I wanted to use these and put them on the top. And so I just painted them with the cake batter color, and then they're on a branch, and I painted that brown. And I'm going to place that up at the top. I glue it up there with my wood-tight glue, and then I just tape it down and leave it alone overnight so that it will stick. Then I used my Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax, and I went all the way around this. With the DIY paint, you have to seal it. And so I sealed everything in really good with my Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax. And then I used a wax brush and then I just wiped off the excess. 
Then the next day, I just took the tape off the birds, and it's beautiful. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way. For DIY number two, I am going to use this new Dixie Belle color that I got. It's called Pumpkin Spice, and I think this is a gorgeous color. And I'm simply going to take two of those smaller little terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree and two of the little tiny ones. I'm going to give these two coats of the Pumpkin Spice, letting it dry in between coats. I've got some burlap ribbon. One is from burlapfabric.com and one's from the Dollar Tree. I actually decided to use the one from the Dollar Tree because I like the way that it looked a little bit better. It was a little bit of a darker color and that's what I was going for. I just cut off a piece and then I cut off those ends because I don't want those on there. Next, I'm going to take and wrap this around the bottom portion of the larger of the pots and it's going to go all the way around just make sure you get it right underneath that rim at the top and I just used hot glue to get it to stay. I cut off any of the excess that I had hanging over and then I just glued that bottom part down so that it would sit flat. Next, I'm going to draw some eyeballs on here, and I just draw two big round black circles with my Sharpie. And then I'm going to leave just a little bit of the burlap showing on the furthest left side there. Then I take my white paint pen. And I'm just going to color in that little area that I just left and didn't do, you know, I didn't do the black on it. And then I put two little dots on the right hand side and that makes his little eyeballs. Next, I use my black Sharpie and I just make a little rounded nose. And I am going to then take my orange colored Arteza marker and color that in orange and put one white dot on the right hand side. And then to make the mouth, I simply make kind of like a little squiggly line with the little grinny face at the top there or the little dimple looking thingies. Then I'm just going to take some of this Dollar Tree hay, and I've got about a three to four inch piece. I tie it in the center with some jute twine, and I'm going to put just a little bit of glue where I tied it together, and then I'm going to like bend it and stick it down inside, and that's going to be his hair. Then I'm just going to take a couple of loose strands of the hay, and I'm going to glue it on the very bottom part of one of the pots and then put some more hot glue and I tried to stick his head on but I also needed to use some um, super glue so I used my star bond glue to make it stick really well then to cover that area up I cut a small piece of a Dollar Tree ribbon off the thin ribbon and I'm just simply going to glue this part around where that area shows where his neck is connected. Then I'm simply going to take and cut out two squares, small squares, because these are just going to go on his belly, and it's just for a little extra embellishment. One's a little bit larger, and one's just a little bit smaller. And then I just glued those on there with my hot glue gun. And then I took my Sharpie and I just kind of outlined around the very edge of that.
I'm going to take some more of the hay, and this time, instead of folding it in the middle, I'm just going to cut it, and then I'm simply going to glue this down in the very bottom of the two smaller little pot holders or plant holders. And I did this in both of the two smaller little plant holders. Then I took some of this thicker jute twine and I got this off of Amazon, but it's basically about the same perimeter as the kind that you get from Walmart. And I'm just going to put a daub of glue on the very bottom part of what's going to be his little arm and i'm going to glue that rope to that to create the arms then i went up underneath where i put the little ribbon on his neck and that is where i'm going to put a little bit of glue and i'm going to put the little arms attached right there and they're just going to hang freely I'm going to use the same size rope for the legs and at the very bottom I tied a little knot which is kind of going to be a little foot. Then I'm going to take these two very small pine cones that I have and I'm going to paint them with that same pumpkin spice color that I painted the body of my little planter man with. And then I cut that knot off right at the very bottom part where all I have is the knot and there's no overhang. And then I just glue that on to the pine cone. And these are going to be his feet. Then I'm just going to go in the very front of the little man and I'm going to put the glue one on each side and then glue that down and i also used a little bit of the star bond glue here too just to make sure that we had a really good hold then i went in and did the exact same thing on the opposite side and those are going to be his little feet and here's what the little man looked like i also made a little girl and i'll show you how i did that one Now to do the little girl, I did everything the exact same thing. The only difference is I'm going to put some bows in her hair and give her some hair. So I'm just doing the little figure eight bow and I'm going to quickly tie this with some jute twine. To make her hair, I take about six inches of the hay. I fold it in the center and I'm simply going to glue it on one on each side and it's going to be like little pigtails and so it's going to go one on each side of the head then i'm going to take that little figure eight bow that i just made and i'm just simply going to glue it right on the very top of where the little pigtail meets the the head there and that's going to be like little ribbons in her hair and i do that on each side isn't she just the cutest little thing? Now I'm going to make a little finger bow, and I do that by wrapping jute twine about maybe four times around about three to four fingers. And then I just tie that in the middle with my jute twine right in the very center. Just squish it together and tie it. Then I take my scissors and I cut the loops and literally just cut them and they kind of phrase out everywhere. And then I just clip it down a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. Then I just hot glued this down to what would be her little collar there, the little ribbon that we put around her collar. 
And then you know I've got to finish it off with my little vintagey button because I think that's cute. And then you just cut down any stray hairs that kind of looks crazy or anything. And that's how I made the little girl. Super easy. Now we're moving right into DIY number three. This one is simple and quick. I have this little tag that came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use my new Dixie Belle color called Juniper, and it's a fall color. I'm going to put two coats of this all over the front of this. Then I simply went to my Cricut and I pulled this up under the phrases on Cricut and it says running on pumpkin spice and Jesus. I thought this was so beautiful and I love to do this in the white color because it really pops with that green juniper color. Now the little cutout that is at the top, the little pumpkin, we're going to make that kind of look 3D. I took an old scarf and I literally just kind of cut out a large square. And I flipped my board over and I filled that little pumpkin part with like some cotton balls. And then I'm just going to glue my square down on three sides to the back of this board. Then I'm going to take that last side and I'm going to flip it over and it's almost going to make like a little pillow, if you will, where the cotton, the little cotton balls are going to be the inside of it. It's like a, a little pillow on the back that I have glued on the back. And when you place it up against the wall, it's going to be 3D and the little pumpkin's going to stick out. That color is gorgeous with the green. If you're enjoying this content so far, I would like to ask you to hit that like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. And I would love for you to subscribe and become a part of my family. All you have to do is hit that little red subscribe button and there's a bell beside it. And when you click that bell, YouTube will let you know every time I put out a video. Now let's get into our last DIY. This one is a basket that I got at the thrift store for only $3. I absolutely love this style of basket. I have several of them. This is the most shallow one that I have, which would make it perfect to go on the wall if I wanted to. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to give it about three coats of a color called Moss Green. And it is by Rust-Oleum Two Times, which is my favorite. And then I'm also going to go over it with the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear to seal it really good. And that's absolutely all I did to this one. I'm going to show you what it looks like by itself and then styled. 
Hey, if you guys stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for believing in me and for coming and spending a little bit of time with me today. I hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy, and I want to welcome you to my channel. I am tickle pink that you came this way to spend some time with me today. I'm a small business owner here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where I do thrift flips, and I love to do vintage-inspired upcycles. And I would love to have you come along on this journey with me. Why don't you hit that subscribe button and become a part of our family here on YouTube? It's real easy. All you got to do is hit that red button, and you're in. And if you hit that bell beside it, YouTube's going to let you know every time that I put out a video. So today, we're just going to jump right into DIY number one. I've got this cute little cookie jar that I found at a vintage resale store, and I probably paid $1.99 for it. And last year, I kind of messed it up. I spray painted it, and a little bit of the paint ran, and I hate when that happens. So y'all are going to think I'm crazy. To get that paint back down to the normal surface, I took my sander to it, y'all. Not a sanding sponge. I'm talking about electric sander, and I buzzed it down. After I did that, I brought it back in and I cleaned it up really good and got all that old dust off of it. And this is kind of what it looks like. But at least it didn't have any runs in it anymore. And I'm sorry that my head is a little bit in the way. I'm trying new angles with my camera. I've got my DIY Gypsy Green Paint, which is my favorite green paint. And as soon as I started putting it on the lid of this, I realized it wasn't taking the paint very well because it's glass and I needed to put a primer on it. So I stopped right there, got my Dixie Bell Slick Stick, which you use that for glass or anything that's kind of hard to paint. It's pretty much a primer. And I just slapped two coats of that on this. Now it did take two coats. It usually takes one, but it took two this time. Now I'm going back in with my DIY Gypsy Green and I gave it two full coats and then I totally let it dry. When it was dry, I took some of these new um, transfers that I got. I got them off Amazon, and they're in my Amazon store if you want some. These are made by Prima Redesign. Now, the reason why I got these is because they had mushrooms on them, and you know mushrooms is the new thing. It's kind of everywhere you look. Mushrooms and sunflowers is kind of the thing that I'm seeing this fall. So I thought it would be beautiful with the gypsy green, and I found this pretty mushroom that looked perfect on this little uh, cookie jar and so I just laid it down and I used the little tool that they send you and I put the transfer on and once again I am sorry for this angle guys I didn't realize that it was that far behind me the rest of the film is not like this so I just wanted to let you know in advance but like I said, I was trying out new angles, and I'm so sorry. But I got that on there, and then I burnished it, which that just means you use the film that it comes with and kind of rub it around. And then I found a beautiful little butterfly that goes with the mushroom, and so I just kind of put it up on the side, kind of catty corner up there. I thought that that looked sweet, and it just gave it a little added touch. And then after that, I just took my DIY white wax and I brushed it on with my waxing brush that Miss Lori sent me over at Milton's Daughter. And you guys always ask me where I get my transfers at and all of my IOD needs and paint. And I get it from Miss Lori at Milton's Daughter. And I always leave her information in the description box below because she gives my viewers 10% off when you use the code CraftyCathy10. So, I started using a rag because I liked it better on this than the wax brush. I was afraid I was going to get the paint off. So, I just kind of wiped it on and basically wiped it right back off to where I wanted it. And that's all I did to this one. It turned out so cute. Let me know what you think. Now, 
Now we're moving right into DIY number two. And I found a huge sale at the Dollar General store. And this tray is normally $7, but it was half off. So I only spent $3.50 on it. And I did put a coat of that Dixie Belle slick stick on it first because it's a metal tray and it wasn't holding the paint very well. So I just used the Waverly Mineral Paint and I gave it two good full coats, but I left the handles black because I liked it that way. Then I did just a slight bit of wet distressing. I actually just took a baby wipe and it has a black rim around the top and it was really hard to paint and not get it on that black rim. So I just kind of went all the way around that top so the black would show up. And also, you know, I just went back over the handles because I got paint in a couple of little spots, made sure I got that off. And there was a couple of spots where I wanted the white to kind of peek through. So I just do wet distressing with that baby wipe and it wipes right off. Then I took my IOD black wax and I took my wax brush. I just put a little bit on there. It doesn't take much and I just kind of wiped it almost in a up and down and circular motion. And then I just take a lint-free rag and wipe off the excess that I don't want on there. And I really like the way that this black wax looked with the mineral. I've never used that combination before and I was pleasantly surprised. Then from that same pack of transfers, the Prima redesign, I have the red truck on here and it's got like a sunflower on it and stuff. It's really pretty. It's almost like a maroon color truck. And I did the same thing and used that little tool that they send me to put it on there. And then I just burnished it, which means you go around it with that film that it came off of. And it's basically just to help it get stuck down real good. Then I picked a little saying that was on here and it said, let there be pumpkin spice. And I thought that was cute for fall. And so I put that little saying on there and then I burnished it also. Let me know if you like this one. We are moving right along into DIY number three. I got really lucky and came across some luggage lately. And this is like the little makeup luggage that goes along with it. It's in decent condition for the age that it is, but it needed some work. It just needed to be cleaned up. I don't think it had ever been used, to be honest with you. So after I cleaned it up, I wanted to do something a little different. I taped off all the silver parts because I wanted to keep that and I spray painted it black. Then I brought it inside and I'm going to use this gorgeous, gorgeous transfers and they are IOD and it's called Cheers. And at first I thought, what am I going to do with these? Because it's like grapes and wine and that kind of thing. But look what I came across. This is transfer gold in my book, y'all. This was sent to me by Miss Lori at Milton's Daughter to try out. And I am so glad that she sent this to me because I never even noticed this one before. So I picked this beautiful piece that says Merlot on it and it's got like a castle in it and I thought that would look really good with that black background and I was right. So I laid it down and I did it the same way that I do all the other transfers. I just rub my finger over it then I just use that little tool that they send me and I rub lightly over the top of it and I find that it's easier to get the transfers off whenever you are kind of holding it up and it just almost peels off like a sticker and then I burnished it that's just use the film that comes with it and I'm just going to be honest with you guys I was using the Prima redesign at the first of this but there is no comparison when it comes to the quality between these two transfers. I just have to be honest. The other ones are cheaper, but you get what you pay for, and that's all I'm going to say. Now, this one, the, the rose here, it came from the Redoubt 2 
book. And that's the beauty with the ILD. You know, you can use different ones and just different pieces, and they always seem to go get together. These leaves didn't even go with this rose, but I made it work, and I think it looks beautiful. I found some smaller roses that I thought looked really cute down on the bottom. If you put too many transfers, it kind of looks tacky, but just a few looks really classy and high-end. And then just as a personal preference, I like to go over mine with a sanding sponge very, very lightly because it kind of scratches it up a little bit and it doesn't have that new appearance. It gives it that vintage vibe that you know I love. I really don't expect that this is going to stick around very long in my booth. And I have three other pieces that goes with this collection too. Let me know how you like this one. Do you like the black? I think it was a beautiful choice. This video has went by so quick and we're already coming up on our last DIY of the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family here. And if you're enjoying this content, hit the like button because that really helps me out here on YouTube. Now, this one is a beautiful clock that we got for $3.99 at Goodwill. And I took that little center piece off. It literally just popped off. And also, it had like a round glass front on it that I pulled off. But I wanted to show you the whole picture of the clock here. I love to work with clocks, especially if they have like an ornate design. The first thing that I did was pick this other mushroom transfer that I have from the Prima Redesign, and we're going to put it right on the face of the clock. I love to do this a lot of times, and it really makes a huge difference in a clock. I just took and made a small hole in the center of that transfer so I could pop it right down over that little uh, pin that sticks up in the middle of the clock. And one thing I've learned from this video that we're definitely not doing this angle anymore, but y'all get a great view of all the gray hairs that are popping up in my head. That's because I'm trying to do two videos a week and it's really tough sometimes, but I love doing it guys. So yeah, I just put the transfer on and I know it's not a good view, but I just used the little tool that they sent me. Then I took my Gypsy Green, which is that my favorite DIY color, and I'm going to go around the rim of this clock. I also took the clock outside and covered up the main body of it, and I spray painted all the ornate parts with my Rust-Oleum 2 times black matte color. Then I just put everything back together, and I keep the stuff on the little, um, the hands there, the pin, exactly the way that it came off because that way I, I won't lose the pieces. And do you know this clock still works perfectly with no problems? And so I got the time set on it and I got everything set back in place the way that it goes. I mean, just little changes like this can make such a difference. And it had three screws that I put back in the front. Then I took that little part that ticks back and forth. You know, I don't even know what that part's called or if it has a name, but I had spray painted it black and I thought that would look really cute if I just did it in the gypsy green. And so I gave it two coats. And that's all I had to do to this clock. It was a simple change, but it made such a statement and it's gonna sell really fast. I just know it. Hey there, welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm tickle pink that you came to spend your time with me today. Today, I have for you a dollar store fall video. If you find value and inspiration in this video, I would love for you to hit the like button. And hey, subscribe if you want to become a part of our family. We'd love to have you. 
I'm going to start off with these two glass jars that I got on clearance at the Dollar General. They're normally four bucks, but I only paid two dollars a piece for them. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is use my Dixie Belle Slick Stick, and I gave it two coats. This is an excellent primer for glass. I mixed up red and yellow and got this mauve color. And this is what we're going to use today to paint these. So, instead of painting both of them this color, I gave one of them this color. The other one I just did with a color called Home Decor Java. And it turned out to be a dark brown. I painted both of the lids the Java color. I also had to give the lids two coats and I didn't show myself doing all the different color. But the color Java is by Folk Art and it's a brown color. I got this set of transfers off of Etsy and they are by Redesign. And as you see, it's got a lot of pinks, mauves, and like a purpley color in it. It also has a cream color and it is all fall and autumn inspired. I picked out a pretty floral pattern and there was actually two of each. And I also picked out two words. One says autumn and one said pumpkin. And we're gonna put these on the front. You do these just like any other transfer. It feels like a sticker. You take that backing sheet off and you lay it down where you desire to put it. And I found it easier to use my fingernail instead of the little tool to rub this on. Just because it was so small and then the area that I was putting it in was that little rounded area. So just so I didn't make any mistakes, that's how I put it on. And then right up above the little circle area is where I put the words. On the mauve color, I put the word autumn. And I'm just going to be honest, you know I usually use the IOD transfers and these were much cheaper. They were only $11, but I would not recommend these at all. They cracked. They were terrible. The U actually came off and I had to use my brown Arteza marker to put the U back on just to try to save it. And I did a good job at saving it, but I really don't recommend these. They just aren't my IOD quality. Here is the Java, and it actually came out better, the word pumpkin, but it still was cracked and looked kind of, it just wasn't what I like when I do my transfers. And so I'm going to put a little bit of jute cord on the back. I always start and glue it on the back. That way, if it looks funky, it's on the back part. You can't tell. I wrapped it around three times, and then I just glued it back cut the jute cord off, and then I always burn off the fuzzies. And don't be afraid to do this, guys. I've done this for years, and I hold it on there forever. And if it's going to burn down the house, I think I would have already done so. I've got these little brown leaves that I ordered off of Amazon. They're just little wooden brown leaves, and I painted one Java and one the mauve color. And look at these beautiful little wooden tags. These were actually cheaper for me to use in my booth. I got a hundred of them off of Amazon for $10. And if I get 10 of those little white cardstock type tags from Staples, they're usually about 15 bucks. So go figure. And these are cuter. So anyways, I took those little wooden leaves and I put the mauve one on top of the mauve. And then I put the brown one on top of the brown one. And I wrapped those little tags with the jute on the sides of the little containers. I love to put these little tags on things. And I think it gives it like a boutique touch. It just gives it that little something extra. And I like to use my little stamps that I have that has different scripture on it. And just put something like that on there. Because I think that when a person buys that and reads that, it just kind of gives them a little inspiration. And it's cute. These are the stamps that I got the other day off of Amazon. And I'm going to use this one that says, I will sing to the Lord forever because he's been good to me. I think that's sweet. And when somebody reads that, they're like, you know, oh yeah, he is good to me. You know what I'm saying? They just read it and it's like, 
a little affirmation for your day. And then the other one that I used, I put on there, it just simply said, God is love, and it had a the scripture that it goes along with also. So let me know what you think about this one. DIY number two, we're going to make this faux apple pie, and I think this is cute as can be. You just need a few items to make this, and I tweaked it a little bit from the others that I've seen. I've got one of these beautiful little dishes that you get from the Dollar Tree. I've got a sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree, and then I have some cotton muslin that I got from the fabric department at Walmart. I cut my sanding sponge into what would be bite-sized pieces. You really need a regular sponge, like a big sponge from the automotive department at Dollar Tree, but that's all I had. And I used these two brown colors. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, I've got like a rust color almost and a lighter brown because, you know, when you cook apples, they get that brownish color. So just whatever color you want to make it the color that you perceive your apples to be when they're done. And I just mixed it up and I'm simply just gonna paint this on all the pieces of my sponge. Now we're gonna take our muslin and I stained this with coffee. You literally just leave it in coffee for about 30 minutes at least. I cut a one inch strip and then you just rip it straight down. And I did one long piece. And then I cut about a two inch strip and ripped it down also. By now the sanding sponge should be dry. We're gonna take our little dish and we're literally just gonna glue these pieces down and it's going to look like little pieces of apple down inside you just glue it all the way till you get to like basically a flush edge at the top then you're going to take your one inch pieces that you have you're going to lay three across vertical and then three across horizontal. And what you do is you flip one piece up, lay it down, and then do the other two. It's probably easier to see what I'm doing than to explain. This will create a look the, the way that a pie looks. And then we're just gonna glue the edges down on each one. And then we're simply just going to cut off the excess that's hanging over past where we glued it down. If you have any little strings that's sticking up, just cut them off. Now we're going to take the piece of muslin that is the two inch and we're going to make the crust around the pie. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to glue a starting point down and then we are going to make pleats. And the way that you do that is just simply by kind of making a little fold. And at each fold, you're going to put a piece of glue down, just a dot of glue, so that it will hold it. And it kind of makes it look like the edge around a pie. And you can see my fingers the way I'm doing it. It's easier to see than to explain. You just fold and glue fold and glue all the way around. And then once you have the whole crust done around the edge, 
you're going to take and cut off any little strings that may be coming out from there and you're also going to just kind of fluff up the edge to where it does look exactly like a pie now we're going to take a spray adhesive and we're going to use two different types of glitter we're going to put a little bit of the spray on the top and then we're going to splash the glitter on the top and that's going to create a look like it's got little sugar crystals on the top then we're going to take a little bit of cinnamon and we're going to sprinkle the cinnamon on the top i prefer to put it on my hand and then sprinkle it so it doesn't glob up then you just take the excess off of the top then I'm just going to make sure that I got the edges fluffed up real good and I'm going to put just one more coat of the sealer on it so that it will stay on there. And then I'm going to cut off any little fuzzy hairs that are sticking out. Next I'm going to use this little stamp set that I got off of Amazon and I'm just going to take a small piece of the two inch that I have and I liked this maroon color. I thought it looked really cute and we are going to spell out the words apple on this. Then I'm simply going to cut off the excess and I'm going to glue that on the front part of my little pie. Now this is just cute as a button. Let me know what you think about it. If you're liking this content so far, hit that like button because it really helps me out on the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what in the world are you waiting for? You know I want you here in my family. All you got to do is hit that little red subscribe button and there's a bell beside it. And when you click that bell, YouTube's going to let you know every time I upload a video. Now this one is adorable. I've got three of these pumpkins that come from the Dollar Tree. And then I have a couple of different types of cardstock that I got from Hobby Lobby. The first thing that I'm going to do is take off these little pieces that's at the top and then all of the little tags off there. And we're going to put the cardstock in the middle of the raised parts of this pumpkin. So what I do is I lay the cardstock over it and I push down with my fingers to get the pattern cut out. Then you just flip your cardstock over and you have a perfect pattern to show you where to cut out at. And I'm just going to cut out all my little three pieces of each pumpkin. I did two pumpkins that have the truck on them and one is a black and white buffalo check pattern. And so I just lay these back out and make sure that everything's going to be correct. Then I take this orange color that I created myself with red and yellow and the parts that's not going to be raised, I painted all of those orange. Once I had it all painted, I am just going to take a glue stick and I'm going to glue all the pieces down where they go on each one. I like to use my brayer once I have these down on there just to make sure that they're good and stuck on there. I forgot to fill in those little holes so I'm going to use this wood filler and I'm going to just put that in there but then in the end it really didn't matter because I'm going to put a bow right over it but oh well we got to make sure we do it right anyways I have this old vintage shutter that I'm going to take outside and I'm going to spray paint it black with my rust-oleum two times matte black and it turned out really cute on the back of it I'm going to put a piece of wood so it doesn't fold up on me and then I'm going to use my little uh, brad nailer to pop the nails in there so it'll be simple and easy to put on there 
by now my little wood filler was dry and so I'm just gonna sand it down and then repaint that little part right there orange just to cover that up. I'm gonna make a super easy bow. I take a piece of my ribbon and I'm gonna glue the ends together to make a circle. And I'm gonna do this two times and then basically just squish it together in the middle and it's gonna make what looks like a bow tie. Then I take my jute twine and I'm going to tie that together in the middle. Then I take another piece of ribbon and that's gonna be my tails and I'm going to just glue it down onto my little pumpkin and then I'm gonna glue my bow on the top and I'm going to dovetail the ends. Then I'm gonna take my buttons and I put a large orange one and a small black one on one. And then I did the bows exactly the same on all three, but I did different colors of my little buttons. Then I'm simply gonna take my pumpkins and I'm going to glue them on my shutter. I liked it going up and down instead of sideways. I thought that looked so much prettier. I then took my Spanish moss that I got from Florida from a tree and I'm going to put down a little bit of glue underneath each pumpkin and I'm going to place the little Spanish moss underneath each pumpkin. Now I have some of these little pumpkin stems that I got from Walmart and they had really pretty leaves on them. And so I'm going to put the leaves, they come in twos by the way, and I'm going to put the leaves on one side and a sunflower that I got from these picks at Walmart on the opposite side. And then, so I ended up doing three sunflowers and two of the pieces of the leaves. And I think this turned out just absolutely adorable. Let me know what you think about this one. This won't last long in my booth. This last one is super quick and easy. This is one that I did last year and it's a little picture hanger. Now I'm going to use this same cardstock to push down around the shape of this pumpkin and it holds a little picture. I'm gonna cut out the shape. I'm gonna use my glue stick again to place this right down over the picture that I had on the front. I find the glue stick is much easier when you're using cardstock because there's no wrinkles like Mod Podge. I used my brayer and then I just painted the top a um, brownish color. It's the same brown that I mixed up for those apples a while ago when we did the faux apple pie. Then I take the lamb's ear that comes from Walmart and I'm gonna make these be the little leaves for the pumpkin on the top. And then I simply just glued a little bit of the Spanish moss on the top and that's all I did and popped a picture in this. And I think that this is probably gonna sell really quick. If y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you. I love y'all and I appreciate every one of you. Hello, everybody.
it's Cousin Bobby Joe! I am Kathy's gorgeous, talented, beautiful singing cousin. And I got stars in my eyes because I'm headed to Hollywood, baby. Guess what happened? Well, somebody saw my latest mug shot and they called me and told me they want me to be in their commercial. Oh yeah, I knew it was coming. Well, anyways, you'll never believe what the commercial is going to be for. Hold on to your drawers because I'm back to tell you. It's for potted meat. Yeah, the steak of Tennessee, baby. You know it. And I am so excited that they're going to put me in that commercial. So, the next time that I come on here, I'm probably going to be a bazillion billionaire because you know that if I start doing commercials for potted meat, that they're going to call me for spam too. You know that's two of my most favorite foods. Oh, I can cook it any way that you can imagine. I can make it taste better than a filet mignon. Do you know that? Oh yeah, I'm great. So anyways, I just wanted to let you know that that's what's going on with me. And I do have some bad news. Me and Buford are still in the dumps because he won't leave that Sally Ann alone. So, you know, me, I always try to make the best out of a bad situation. But, you know, that old silly Sally Ann is just a regular Jolene. Shout out, Dolly! Oh yeah, baby! You know that all of these commercials that I do, well, they're actually commercials because I'm fishing it out there so that the Hollywood stars can see me. But you know that Dolly watches me because I just know she does, okay? I just know it. So anyways, I try to make the best out of the situation. So we'll see what happens with me and Buford. But hey, I'm headed to Hollywood, so I ain't worried about no man. I'm going to have him at my beck and call. <laughs> so we'll just stay tuned and see what happens on that. To be continued. <laughs> I love you, and I'm going to put my headshots in here for Hollywood so you can see how gorgeous I am. I love you. Look, Kaysen, there's a line in the ladies' room. What? There's a line in the ladies' room. Emo is sitting on the nest of eggs. And Loretta's waiting her turn. And then Minnie's down here pace, pacing. And it's driving her crazy. I'm surprised Loretta don't attack Emo because she's mean to Emo sometimes. Come on, Retta. Come on, Emo. I just need the eggs, girls. And then I'll leave y'all alone. Come on. Can we have those eggs, please? Loretta's like, wait your turn, honey. 